Hi, this is a lecture video on work, internal energy, and thermodynamics. For many of you, especially if you took chemistry, you are already familiar with the ideal gas law, PV equals NKT. Now, the thing with the ideal gas law is, and this is something that surprising number of students forget or neglect, it is a relationship that relates three dynamical quantities together, pressure, volume, and temperature. And usually doesn't change once a set. What this means is the ideal gas law actually doesn't say what happens to the temperature when, for example, pressure increases. If a volume decreases enough, then temperature can decrease. For some of the thermodynamic processes we looked at, you can quickly figure out how temperature changes. Isothermal process says that the temperature is constant, simply enough. With the isobaric or isochoric process, since one of the two variables, pressure or volume, remains the same, if the other thing increases, then the temperature must also go up. For example, in an isobaric expansion, the temperature goes up. But what about the other processes, especially the adiabatic process? Since adiabatic means no heat transfer, does it mean the temperature does not change? Surprisingly, the answer is no. Temperature changes in an adiabatic process and we have to look to thermodynamics to figure out how it changes. Okay, one more piece to go over. From our discussion in chapter two, section 2.2, temperature is directly related to the internal energy. For monatomic ideal gas, look at section 2.3 for why monatomic versus diatomic makes a difference. A gas of N particles at temperature T has internal energy, microscopic kinetic energy, of 3 halves NKT. This is mentioned again in chapter 3 in sections 3.2, 3.5, 3.6. Um, by the way, one thing important for my class, we are not going to use R, gas constant, or Avogadro's number or mole. When you see equations in textbook that uses gas constant, for example, n times r, you can replace it with a capital N times k sub b, that is, number of molecules times Boltzmann's constant. All right, so this is where we stand. Say you have a process that doesn't completely tell you everything about pressure and volume, and you are trying to figure out what happens to the temperature. So you are trying to figure out what happens to the internal energy, how the energy is changing. And whenever you see the phrase energy change, I want you to think work. Work gives the change of energy. This is why section 3.2 actually leads with a reformulation of work. In physics 4a, we define the work as force times displacement. Using this model of a piston, you can follow the short derivation to see that for a gas, force times displacement is equal to pressure times change in volume. This is why you are going to be seeing a lot of pressure volume diagrams. It plots complete information about your system. Once you know pressure and volume, you can figure out the temperature from the ideal gas law. And since the total work over a process is pressure as a function of volume integrated over change of volume from V1 to V2, the area under the curve in PV diagram gives the work done by the system in the process. Now I want you to think about adiabatic compression. 
in an adiabatic compression, the intuitive guess is you are doing work on the system to compress it. So this should increase the internal energy of the system, which increases the temperature of the gas. The first law of thermodynamics is consistent with this intuition. It says formally that change of internal energy can be attributed to two things. Heat transfer into the system is positive and work done. Work done by the gas is positive, so positive work decreases energy. So for an adiabatic process, zero Q, negative work, work done on system leads to a positive change in internal energy. Now, the first law of thermodynamics is another relationship with the three dynamical quantities. It doesn't say that when gas does work, the internal energy always decreases. For an example, in an isobaric expansion, the gas does work. So that part of contribution is negative. But from the ideal gas law, you know that the temperature of the gas must be increasing in isobaric expansion. Pressure is constant, but volume is increasing. So this means internal energy is increasing. So you have to figure that there must be enough heat flowing in to both do work and increase the internal energy of the gas. Now, for the remainder of this video, let's stick to adiabatic systems. Since it's simpler, Q is zero, so we only have to worry about work and the change in internal energy. When work is done by gas, expanding under pressure, for example, the internal energy decreases, which means a temperature decrease. When work is done on the gas, being compressed under pressure, for example, then W is negative, so the internal energy increases, which means a temperature increase. I will illustrate this in two ways, with a simulation and with a physical demo. Here is the FET simulation state of matter. Let me get some cold sample of neon gas. Here's neon gas at the temperature of 100 Kelvin. As you can see, when I compress this gas, you see the temperature increasing. This is all what we were talking about earlier, but the simulation shows another view the molecular model view. If you look at this picture of compression carefully, you can figure out from mechanical point of view why the temperature of gas increases. As you can see, these gas molecules are constantly bouncing from the piston. That's what produces pressure. When the piston moves toward the gas molecule that is bouncing off, that's like a baseball bat moving towards a slow-moving baseball that is about to bounce off from the bed, the ball bounces off faster than it came in. Um, so here, if the piston wall is moving toward the gas molecule, the gas molecule bounces off faster than it comes in, which means higher kinetic energy and temperature for the gas. This also works the other way. If the piston wall is moving away from the bouncing gas molecule, the gas molecule bounces away slower. Think of a baseball bunt where the heater deliberately pulls the bat back as the ball bounces in order to make the ball just drop where it hit the bat. So the gas molecules bouncing from a piston wall moving away cools down. Let me try it here. It doesn't always work well because there are so few collisions you have to be very careful to move it slowly so that while you are moving it away, the gas molecule bounces off from it. And it doesn't work quite as well. You can try, play with it on your own. Um, now, I want to wrap up this video with a physical demo. Well, a recording of a physical demo. 
This is a piston for illustrating what we have been talking about. I put in a small piece of cotton and push it down as far as I can push it down. Now I'm going to suddenly compress it. See what happens. Ignite. Let me try the second time. Another small piece of cotton. Push it down again. And then I'm going to suddenly compress it again. And it ignites again. This is from the increase in temperature of air, from increase in internal energy of air in the piston, from the work done on the gas in the adiabatic compression. All right, this was a long video. Understanding the ideas you see in this video will help you in analyzing heat engine cycles. Like most other areas of physics, analyzing a thermodynamic process isn't just throwing together equations and formulas you memorize. Like with mechanics, once you have an intuition for the physical processes that take place, It'll help you find an efficient solution path more quickly. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.